Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. This is today's project. It's a twist and close box. It's another one and this is my octagon. This has got eight sides to it and it opens up in the same way as my other ones did. Like that. Love it, love it, love it. And it will twist and pop itself closed and keep itself closed. So if you haven't seen them before, I have a three-sided, a four-sided and a six-sided version of this. Twist and close. And this is my eight-sided one. So I'm going to show you how to make it. And I decided after I did my six-sided one that it probably could do with being, I said it looked a bit like a carousel. So I've got the carousel paper. Dead easy to make. Please do not try and write down any of my measurements. There are 16, 17, 18 of them that I'm going to read out to you very quickly. But don't worry about writing them down. Um, they will all be over on my blog. So don't, don't worry whatsoever. Right. Oh, and in my blog, if you click open the description bar down below, there will be a direct link to this project. So you don't have to go hunting for it. Um, it will be there. Right. My piece of card state, beautiful card state, card stock, beautiful Calypso coral, 10 and a half inches by eight inches, which is 26 by 20 centimeters. Look, this is how many measurements there are. Loads of them. Couldn't see them. Right. So we're going to score along the top. On the long side, every one and a quarter inches. So one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, five, six and a quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters, and ten inches. Slightly easier in metric. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, and twenty-four. Then you need to come and make some little marks, just little marks at the top. So Five eighths of an inch, uh, one and seven eighths, yep, one and seven eighths of an inch, three and an eighth, four and three eighths, five and five eighths, six and seven eighths, eight and one eighth, and nine and three eighths of an inch. Also easier in metric, one and a half, four and a half, seven and a half, ten and a half, thirteen and a half, sixteen and a half, nineteen and a half, twenty two and a half. Woo! Turn it round to the side, make sure your little marks are to the right hand side and score it at one and three quarter inches and six inches, which in metric is four centimetres, 15 centimetres. OK, so same principle as we did with the other twist and close boxes. Take your mark and score from there down to the right hand corner of where you've got a vertical and a horizontal. So from that mark down to that point and you do it eight times with all of them. And if you're curious as to, whoops, as to which part of my um, stylus I use, I always use the fat side for scoring when I'm using my scoring tool because there is a groove for it to go into. And I use the thin side for when I'm doing, when I'm scoring onto um, when I'm not using a scoring tool. So when I'm working on a, on a pad like this, because the grooves in the scoring tool help the fibres break down, but because there's no grooves on here, the thinner side helps that. There is method. Okay. Right. So you can see my zigzag lines. Well, they're not really zigzags, they're sort of strange shapes. We're going to fold and burnish everything. This is fun and games because there's eight. But just come along and go across them all. And this is one of those longer projects that is so worth it with the end result. Um, my boys are very used to seeing the stuff that I create and they're like, yeah, that's great. And they're used to seeing unusual stuff I create, but I had four boys who went, wow. <laughs> when I started doing the twist and close projects. They're easily impressed, or they're not easily impressed, I should say. So for them to say wow is a big deal. Okay, so your diagonal lines, we're gonna push those in, and I'm gonna pinch with my fingers. There's not very much room to be getting a bone folder in there, so I'm pushing firmly with my fingers. If you are a little bit more dexterous, you could flip it over and you could get your bone folder in. But I'm finding that, you know, my fingers are okay. They get the result. Okay, I'm just 
keep going around. It's best to do this before you before you try and put the box together. I have to say, I'm very impressed to see Calypso Coral in one of our pattern papers. I don't see it very often, and it's not a colour I reach for hugely often, but I'm glad to see it, because I can use it a lot. Okay, down at the bottom, snipping away that bit, and just cut straight up all of these, so you're separating your eight bits that are the bottom of the box, or will become the bottom of the box. If, you, if I show you the bottom of mine, this is the bottom, so you've got your eight sides. Right. DSP panels, also eight of them. And look, it's the Calypso Coral. It's um, This is So Saffron and Bermuda Bay. This is Early Espresso and Calypso Coral. How gorgeous is that? So I've got eight of these that measure one by four inches, uh, which is two and a half by ten and a half centimetres. Couldn't think then for a minute. And... I'm going to snail up all of them. So you need one full sheet of designer series paper because it's six by six and another scrap. If you're going with a pattern that is that you need to keep in the same direction. If you're going for a random pattern that doesn't have an obvious vertical and horizontal, um, then you can actually get everything from one sheet. Um, there we go. Right, let's get my horses the right way up. It's confusing actually because some of them are the, they're actually both upside down and the right way up. So you can see this one's a good example. You've got upside down horses as well as, that one's the right way up, that one's upside down. <laughs> okay. I love, I loved seeing all of the different um, versions of the twist and close boxes that people have been sharing with me. I absolutely addicted to seeing them all. Um, I do have a public Facebook group called Poodle's Craft Forum and there's about eight or 9,000 members in that group and loads of people have made um, my twist and close boxes but have also very, you know, made their own variations. They've shortened them, made them taller, fatter, all sorts and I love it. Love, love, love seeing them. Right, fast fuse for the side to close it up. Now we've got eight sides. So it's easy to fold over, whoops, the bottom a little bit trickier because it doesn't actually want to hold itself, it's going to go, no I don't want to go that way, no I want to go that way. So get yourself liquid glue, um, establish where the back is, that's the back, so get yourself liquid glue. and. Start sticking them together. Uh, Tombow does dry really quickly, so you kind of need to move at a bit of speed with this. Because you need to get the glue on and then you need to position it. So there we go. No. Nope. There we go. <laughs> Getting there. There. Got it. <laughs> it's trying to move itself out. Gently flip it over and you can tap down. But this is where we start putting the box together. And you just kind of start pinching with your fingers. And those diagonal score lines will snap it into place. There we go. And it will help position the bottom if necessary. Oh, it's all just popped open. This is why we use liquid glue. There we go. Get it positioned up. Oh, throw it around. Don't you just love the top of it? Oh, I love it. So while that's drying off, I'm going to put my stamping down here. So I have got this little piece measures. No idea. It measures three quarters of an inch by three and three quarters. So that's going to be two centimetres by, no it's going to be, yeah, two centimetres by, oops if I use my ruler, ten centimetres, ten, two by ten centimetres, there we go. And then I've got my vertical greetings set, because it's perfect, because you've, I didn't want to put a sideways image on it, 
Um, so I'm going to go with the words just because, which are they? And I need a long thin block, so I'm going to go with this one. This is an H block. Line it up on my block. I've got early espresso ink. Get that the right way round. Line up my piece of cardstock. And then I'm going to be brave and hope that's centred. Yay! <laughs> that just made me very happy. That could have been messy. Okay. So, snail onto the back of that, and that's the back of the box, yeah, so that's going to be the front, and I, I've stamped onto very vanilla, and then finally I've got the Cupcakes and Carousel embellishment pack, which goes with it all, on this one I used some of the twine, and then I covered the glue dot with a So Saffron candy dot, but actually we've got Calypso Coral ribbon here, and it's an ombre ribbon, so I figured I'd use that. And I can often tie a bow. If it's not attached to something, I can tie a bow, she says, as she fumbles with everything. See, look, I can tie a bow when it's not attached to anything. Not the neatest, but, you know, it's a bow. Let's just trim off those tails and I can stick that on. And a mini glue dot onto that and I can pop it at the top and I'm not going to put a, a should I call it a candy dot before? I meant an enamel shape. I'm not going to put one of those on, it doesn't need it. But just at the top, just because, and a lovely box, a twist close box with eight sides, which means it's huge, absolutely huge. Love it. Anyway, thank you ever so much for joining me and I hope to speak to you soon. Bye.